Welcome, welcome. My name is Anastasia Tsoukas. I'm from NPR Music, and it's such a pleasure to be here with Simona Dinerstein and with Tiff Merritt this evening to talk about their new project, Night, uh, which is a pretty fascinating collaboration. It's not every day you hear a classical pianist sort of sit down and, and chew over ideas, musical ideas, with a singer-songwriter. Um, and they're both incredibly accomplished musicians, and it's a joy to see them together. And I have to admit, a really particularly special joy for me, uh, given the way that you guys first met. And I was lucky enough to be there for that uh, about four and a half years ago. Was it something like that? Five years ago? Long time now. Uh, I was the editor of, for America of a classical music magazine called Gramophone. And Simona was just sort of starting to make a real mark in the classical community. And we thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to have her talk about the experience with another rising artist from another genre? And Simona, who is brilliant at, at putting people together, uh, herself and other people, said, you know, I've been listening to this musician named Tiff Merritt, and I think she would be a great person to speak to. I said, Sounds good to me. We sat down, and within like an hour, you guys were like, hey, we should keep in touch. And yes, you certainly did, didn't you? Um, so welcome to you both, and it's such a pleasure to be sharing the stage with you. Um, so tell me a little bit about how this album came together. Obviously, I just laid out you met about five years ago. And I remember very clearly by the end of the evening, you guys were sort of half joking about, hey, maybe we should do something together someday. And uh, when did this whole project as a recording project start coming together? Well, it first started actually as, a, as concerts. Um, we... Uh, a few years, I guess, after that conversation, we'd become friends, we'd gone to each other's performances, and uh, I guess I was trying to convince Tift to do something, um, and Tift was a little worried, uh, you know, rightfully so, that it would <laughs> maybe not work. Um, and um, I had performed uh, recently at that time at Duke University, and they have a wonderful arts presenter there yeah. called Aaron Greenwald. And um, I kind of told him a little bit about this idea I had. And Tift is from North Carolina, and, and he, he is a big fan of hers. And so he thought it was a great idea. And so he helped sort of create a kind of residency, a short residency for us. And, and we created a program that we performed down there, which we called Night. And we toured it a little bit in, around the country. And then um, we, it, it felt so good and interesting that um, I approached Sony about the possibility of us doing it as a recording project. And we actually did a sort of small performance of it for um, the head of Sony Classical. And he loved it. And that's kind of what happened. So, Tift, maybe you can sort of introduce us to the idea of this album, because there's a ton going on here thematically, musically, there are so many layers to this. So if you can sort of walk us through the album a little bit in terms of, of the original material and reinterpretations. Well, um, I think the, the first thing to say about that would be that, that sort of umbrella of night um, was something that could could tie any kind of this conversation of songs that we were having together and, and point to what it's like to feel your way <laughs> through the dark um, towards someone else, which is what we were really trying to do. And Simona talks about it also as a time when things aren't quite outlined and exactly, you know, things are a little blurry and, and they're free. Uh, so I so we thought that that was really a nice place to to pin what we were doing, and from there, you know, I I I don't know if, if you may want me to talk song by song, but I no, I'd not all the way through. But I I'd rather say that I I think you can listen to the album hopefully without not intellectually just to enjoy it, but I think that. If you think about it more intellectually, which we certainly did, <laughs> um, it's a song cycle. It's a conversation between the two of us, and you're, we put songs side by side that that really 
in the context of Simona and I talking to each other made a surprising amount of sense. Um, but that, without that context, you, it, you wouldn't have thought that they made sense side by side. And it was really surprising to both of us how, how many things actually made so much sense on a, on a human level, on an emotional level, on a, um, on a sonic level, on a, you know, on a level of, uh, of beauty, and maybe not so much from a traditional idea of genre, but we weren't thinking about that. Well, I don't think that that's how people, it's certainly not how I experience the record. It's not like, oh, there's Schubert here and a traditional song there and Billie Holiday here and, you know, here's this point on the map and that point on the map. I think it, there's a real narrative flow and an arc to it um, right. that comes through <laughs> really beautifully, really beautifully. Um, so, you know, but there are things that were new to both of you. I, I would dare say in this. Um, Absolutely. And maybe one of the most surprising things for someone who knows Tift, who's an incredibly gifted artist, who's been nominated for a Grammy Award, country music, to hear you singing Schubert, not in German, and very much with your own stamp. But that was that sort of a leap for you? <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> Originally, this was just going to be like these two concerts, and and I and I thought, all right, well, I should, you know, we should do this, and we're going to learn a lot. But I was, I'd have never been so petrified for a set of concerts in my life, and I remember looking at this a German leader going, I can't fucking sing that, <laughs> and how will I do that? And and then Simona said, no, 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 no. Get, you need to sing in English, and you should make your own translation. And I thought, well, that, that sounds like I could handle that. Well, it must have been very freeing, too. It, well, it, I mean, it was free. I mean, I think, I think initially, we, the places what, where, that we were, where we were fearful were the opposite places. And for me, all, any of the classical pieces were really scary because I it, I was I was free because I had no 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 instinct but that's that's a really scary kind of free and I had to completely turn to Simona and say am I making a fool of myself or am I okay and I think in terms of working without music on the page and working with arrangements I, I would I wouldn't be scared of what was coming out of Simone at all. I was like, wow, that was great, and she would say, this is really uncomfortable for me. This is new territory. So, we were we were kind of cheering each other on to become ourselves in these places where we didn't have instincts of our own. Is that? I think that's yeah, a very fair point, and I wanted to say, like, you were coming at it, too, from a, a very classical position, which improvisation is not often sort of the, the, vocabu the working vocabulary for a classical musician, and, and you have become known over the years, particularly for Bach, among other composers, who it's all about very clear delineation of tradition, and you put your own stamp on things, of course. That's the whole point, why else do it? But you're sort of working within a framework of through composed music and sort of there are sources to rely on to some extent. And so that, was, that one must have been a process of discovery for you as well, I imagine. Yeah, and I, I think I would also add that, <clears throat> that the Schubert that we were just talking about, uh, I thought the point of it was I thought it was great that Tift wasn't familiar, hadn't sung any Schubert, and the point was that she should sing the Schubert how she sings any of her songs, that it, that it, that it, that it was seeing Schubert through Tift's lens. And, um, and if she tried to make it sound more classical, it, it, that didn't work, and it wasn't. It wasn't good, and we we actually felt the Schubert was in a way the most natural, the one that was harder for b actually both of us was Dido's Lament by Purcell because uh, that's m more operatic, and I think that at the beginning maybe we were trying to be more faithful to 
some kind of tradition. And by the end, we found where it, where it meant something for us together now, which, which meant that I actually had to improvise too. And, and Tift did as well. I mean, we kind of got a little bit away from the, the notes that were written on the page. For me, having to improvise is it's completely new. And I would add that when I say improvise, it's not at all like jazz improvisation, which is you know, highly complex and you need to know loads of different kinds of scales and things like that, which I wouldn't be able to do at this point. Um, but the kind of improvisation that I'm talking about is getting a chord, chord chart and trying to figure out what would make sense for me to play also uh, as the pianist that I am. You know, what, what would I bring to it? Because uh, I think that in the beginning I thought that what I was going to bring to it was complexity, like maybe trying to create some kind of counterpoint, mm -hmm. complex counterpoint, and that was not the right direction. It was too, too many notes, it was not direct enough. So I think that what happened was I decided, and we both realized that it was more through co color and tone and like a subtlety of touch, which is another aspect of being a classical pianist. Which, which Simona is so great at, but I, I remember in the beginning I'd have to say, no, you, 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 you have to just play on the two and the four. And you can't put any one eanzas in there at all. And, and she would go, well, but doesn't that sound dumb? And I'd say, no, it sounds dumb the other way. You know, because that is one of the principles or virtues of the kind of music that I, that I do is that there's a lot of space and there's a, a groove that is not complex so that things that are complex on other levels can come through. Um, but there is, a, there is a real letting go, I think, for everybody doing that. And it was really fun to, to, to go through that process with Simona. Well, it, it's funny because, you know, I was looking back at this conversation we now had ages and ages ago, half a decade ago, and I realized in revisiting that how much we talked about bravery. We talked about artistic bravery, we talked about personal bravery, we talked about career bravery, because you've both sort of created your own career trajectories in, in sort of atypical ways. And it's funny to me that all these themes that you were talking about in conversation, you sort of actualized on a recording, you know, that there had, that in order to, uh, what I, you know, with this, what you're talking about, Tift, in terms of uh, creating the right sound for recording, it's kind of an, uh, a stripping away of the lacquer in a lot of ways, you know, so right. you're down to form, right? you know, and, you're, and there's beauty of color and beauty of texture, but you're really looking at essential forms. You're looking at distill, as kind of a distillation. But that takes incredible bravery, and, you know, and I, I, I'm curious to know, was that something you, you were you talking about sort of that those um, elements of, of sort of working th against the grain of what you both knew and sort of coming out the other side? Was that something that you were consciously talking about or were you, or you focused on the process? Well, I, I think both, it, the answer lies in both. I mean, I think it was, in most, I, the way that I like to say it is that we, we had to start a band and have band practice and come up with the language that we spoke to each other, but um, I think that it was it was also what was love. You know, <laughs> what's difficult is when you're in a band with somebody that doesn't understand what you're trying to do, and you have to have this super long conversation, and it never quite comes clear. And you go, I don't know that we should play music together, and. I think in this collaboration, it was really inspiring to me to have those conversations with Simona because it was, there was always a way of thinking about things that was so different than my own, and, but, but so right on. And, and I think there was also this willingness um, to go all the way home, which I think Sometimes collaborations really fall short of that and feel compromised. And you know, I I wanted to in in the in the framework of bravery. You know, Simona 
is not someone who lets things slide and that is a real strength and it's very inspiring to play with someone who sees it all the way through technically emotionally intellectually all of those things and I think we made sure that we both did that so that that, that so that it really is I guess the Venn diagram of where we overlap and it's not like like well, you know, Simone wanted us to do that part, so we did that. And Tiff thought that, so we, you know, it really was, we talked it through and we did what felt way down right to both of us. And that, that in itself is a really hard and beautiful process to have gone through together. Yeah, I think Tiff says it really well and, I, and that it's, it's very hard to, um, we're both, uh, very strong people with pretty strong ideas about things. And um, so to be able to not feel that we were giving anything up, that we were only gaining something in the process was, I think, our aim, both of our aims. And, and um, yeah. I, I would say that the other thing that, you know, I, and I don't really play music with people that I don't have, also have a pretty important personal relationship with. Uh, my work is just really personal to me. And I found that um, there's an astonishing level of trust that you can develop with musicians when you are playing with them, when you are revealing yourself or kind of trying to go further or opening further than you have before. And I think the level of trust that I experienced playing with Simona is a really new territory because it's sometimes absolutely blind trust. So there's a lot of, of love in trusting somebody that blindly. <laughs> well, I mean, t- uh, y- one thing that you had mentioned earlier, Simona, is that this sort of, the heart of this came from live performances. And I obviously, those were shorter programs. I, I, was there... W- was there one piece or one song that sort of was the nut of the, or the seed that really sort of started binding the whole larger project together? Was there one selection or more than one? Well, I, I always think that the, the Schubert that we did, I think, was maybe the first piece that, <clears throat> I mean, I had a very strong vision about how I think that Tift would sound. I th- imagined her playing the harmonica, and I I just had a very strong. Um, well, there's a way that I that I was taught about music to think about music, which is that you have an inner ear and an outer ear, and the inner ear envisions the sound, and the outer ear is the part that makes sure that that vision comes through into reality. And I think for that Schubert, I had a very strong image in my inner ear. And, and I think that we really got to that. We, we, we made it happen. And then after that, a lot of other things fell into place because of I that. have never heard you say that. That is beautiful. <laughs> that is really nice. Well. Maybe some folks who are listening to this aren't familiar with with the Schubert song we're talking about. So would one of you like to sort of describe what's going on in the song a little bit? Well, the song is called Night and Dreams, um, which I won't say in German because my German's horrible. And um, Tift really rewrote the words. I mean, she took the translation, but then she rewrote it into a kind of song that that she would sing. I I, I would have to have Tift talk about the words because I have to say that I don't think about songs in terms of words at all. (laughs) That's a whole other, (laughs) that's a whole other layer to this, isn't it? You know, you work in a realm that's primarily instrumental. You're, You're dependent on sound telling the story without the layer of text. I mean, that I, layer yeah, of yeah. I, I thought of it in a sonic way. I thought of um, it being almost like a, like blues. And, um, and then in a part of the song, I actually take over the melody on the piano, and that's when Tift plays the harmonica. But I think th- you could talk about the words. Well, well we talked about... Um, 
we talked about, I, I can, maybe, we, I'm sure we talked about it, but I, when I, Simona said, no, you need to take the words and make them your own. And I looked at this song about night and dreams and dreams breaking and loneliness and tenderness. And I, I just, I did what I do to, to or I always try to write a very plain spoken kind of lyric that hopefully says something that penetrates and it says something new, but it, it says it in such a plain spoken way that it, it's very, it feels human. It feels like maybe the postman just said that to you. Maybe you just, it feels casual and, and, and... Conversational. Conversational and, hu and but, but most of all, one human to another. Mm. And so I just tried to say those words in a way that was um, not lofty and, and, and sort of humble about night and dreams and the loss of, of, of those things. And, and I thought of it because of the harmonica, like a cowboy poet. You know, I tried to, to, to write something a cowboy might, might say. Well, the immediacy of, of that s selection and of the album is really astonishing and really beautiful. So I want to thank you both for that. So uh, it's time to reach out for questions from the audience, if anyone has anything that they'd like to Don't ask. Don't be shy. Don't, Don't be shy. make us sit up here and not ask us questions. How you guys doing? Thank you for coming. Um, having done this sort of hybrid of, of genres, um, do you think you'll seek out to do it? This can be for either of you, to seek out this kind of collaboration of genre um, again, or if it happens organically, would you be open to testing new sort of, of music and exploring different types of music for either of you guys? What do you think? <laughs> um, I, I, I actually am really excited to try this some more. Um, and I've even thought about, you know, maybe trying to learn more about improvisation from somebody who, who knows what they're doing. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that you, but a no, pianist, no, you know. What I, um, but I, I, I think that it has to be something that is not... In, it's not a theory, like it's not like you think, okay, let's put this together with this and see what happens. It has to be something that I would feel like heart. really drawn to that person. Yeah. yeah, it has to be in the heart. Um, I, I would say that I kind of want to make a rock and roll record now. <laughs> and and that I'm a, I, I think that I am actually think of myself as a writer before I think of myself as a musician and um I I find that the the energy that we have spent finding each other is kind of the same energy that I would s spend writing and I, that it's probably time for me to um go off by myself and write and um I don't know. I think it's really important to to know when to, to reach with your creativity, to know what your sweet spot is, and then and reach from there and try to grow and push yourself. But it's so important to know the difference. <laughs> and and I think having reached with this record and pushed, I I definitely feel an instinct to kind of burrow down into what is a little more effortless and in my world and and see what happens there and then probably having done that I would look up and, and around and say okay where do I where do I go from here um, oh I think that would be interesting though to see sort of having the path for both of you actually when you sort of go back to home base so to speak that you'll have this other palette of experience to draw upon I think that could be a really exciting thing too you know I mean I think the one thing for me is that um, you know, the longer I play music, the long you, you just know when you play music with someone who is a great musician that it's just night and day. And I and I think having played with Simona and uh, and of, and some of the people that I play with in my band, 
but certainly with Simona, it just, you get, you know, it's like the first time you have sour cream frosting. You don't ever want to go back. Hello. Um, I'm curious uh, with uh, the Leonard Cohen on there and the Billie Holiday, was that something um, at the beginning perhaps that did you guys look for things that maybe you um, had common interests about or artists? Did you draw from anything like is there some place that we can start that maybe we jointly like the same kind of music or and how did that kind of play into some of the choices that you, you uh, picked for the album? Uh, well, we started with lists of songs that we sent to each other, and um, and we introduced each other to songs, and then there were songs on the list that we both knew, I think. And um, I think we used the theme of night to sort of narrow the list in a way, keep us to one theme. Um, but um, I think that maybe I was because I didn't really know uh, Tift's world so much, I was drawn to certain songs that Tift would say that that's, you can't do that. It's like too obvious or something, you know? Uh, but for me, it would have been, you know, I, I wouldn't have thought of that because for me, it was still unusual. Um, but you yeah. said that to me too with the Faure because we didn't put that on the record because you yeah. said that's too obvious it's been done and I went, not on my eyes. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> and and I think that was you know, um, it was just a really fun musical conversation that we would send each other, uh, you know, twenty songs, and we would go through it, and someone would say this really touched me, and I would say, well, this really touched me, and and it was always really surprising. I think. Um, what I mean, I remember one of my favorite when I, one of my favorite moments was I sent Simona a couple of versions of Dark End of the Street, which is one of my favorite songs, and she was so drawn to this version of Dark End of the Street on Boomer Story that doesn't have words, and it's some of the finest playing in the world, and it's this kind of she just had great ears. She knew that that was great, and so I, I loved, I loved that. And um, you know, as much as we were working towards each other in the dark, neither of us are in a vacuum. So we could certainly say, you know, God, I love, I love Leonard Cohen, and that kind of points to what you do. And how do we, you know, it's just a process of putting a lot of. <laughs> grist in the mill to see what what really was strong enough to to stand. And there's new music on that too. I mean, there's a Danny Felsenfeld piece on it. You know, and that's something that you both brought not just sort of repertoire music to to the table, but but new music as well. And new songs of Tift and that hadn't been this. recorded before. So yeah. And I think there's another question. At least one more. Hi. This started out as a live project. So how much of these songs were fully fleshed out before you went into the studio um, versus going into the studio and trying to create a recording from what you had done live? Uh, well, I think that we, the, it developed since, from, from the, the concerts to the recording studio, but I don't think that we were within the studio we weren't changing. looking. We weren't looking for the record when no, we went in the we studio. We already knew what we were going to do. Right. I mean, there's always a little bit of surprise and mystery when you're in the studio, or you, you know, like you leave room for mystery in life as you do it when you go in the studio. But I think both Simona and I are as as much as there are so many legitimate ways to make records. What is interesting to me, and what I think is interesting to Simona too is is the moment of performance and and creation and um, catching that so so we knew that that's what we were going to do when we went in the studio and the and the mystery is you wait for it to kind of what you hope that it it shows up and you don't scare it away but it isn't like we're we're layering anything or we're overdubbing or we will go oh sh shit that needs a bridge or something like that I mean which is a totally great way to make records. It's just not, um, 
I think the intensity and the challenge of doing it right then is really what makes us both live musicians and, and makes the concert origin of, of this album kind of uh, the, right, the right thing. I think one of the things that was surprising to me about the process of recording was that we recorded more songs than wound up being on the album. And for Tift, that was quite a normal process because I think she's used to recording and then narrowing it down. But as a classical musician, I never had experienced that before. I, I, I went into the studio thinking we were going to be doing all these songs and they were going to all be on the CD. And it turned out that not only were some of the songs not on the CD, but then like Tift was just fooling around singing um, Wayfaring Stranger just for fun. And, and we were like, oh, we have to have that on the record. And she wasn't, we didn't even know that I mean, I don't. I don't think you knew that you were going to sing that for fun. It was sound. <laughs> <laughs> and then she was singing it, and I was like, "Oh, you have to do that." And that 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 track on the CD is just one take that she did when she was just singing. And and I and I think that's one of the things. I, you know, putting on a concert with a classical musician is really different than putting on a rock concert or. And putting on a show. Putting on a show. And I was so blown away by ha having a program and saying, well, this is what we're going to play. Because I, I mean, like, I don't know what we're going to play until about 12 minutes before. I mean, it's, you know, we're going to play what I'm in the mood to play. And, and I think that there are good and bad things about that. But um, I think that's one of the things one of the freedoms that I enjoy by doing my own music, you know, or like by being the person that, that wrote it, but it's also, there's something lost in that, you know, I haven't announced that I have been practicing this piece and I'm gonna know how to do it and I have to live up to that. So it, it, there are both sides of that. I mean, I, I at this point, you know, will have to tell a presenter what I'm playing in 2015. I and I think that that's a really crazy thing. You know, how do I know that I wanna play that piece in 2015? I'm with you, sister. <laughs> No. Well, I want to thank you both so much because this is such a tremendous treat to sit down with you. So thanks. And it's so lovely to hear two great artists talking so graciously about each other and so warmly. So thanks again. Well, that's the easy part. <laughs>